Hello, my name is Jessica. In today's tutorial, we are going to show you how to set up patron clubs in Koha. First, let's start by logging in to our staff client. Once we're logged into the staff client, the first thing we'll want to do is make sure that our staff members who will be setting up the patron clubs have access to the patron clubs tool. So let's start by bringing up a patron's account. Again, this is going to be one of your staff members that you want to have access to setting up the uh, patron clubs. Once we pull up that staff member name, what we're going to do is come over here to set permissions. We're going to take a look at the permissions. There's a new permission that has been added into the permissions for your staff to allow them to have access to patron clubs. Now of course if your staff member is a super librarian they will automatically have access. If not you'll notice right down here at the bottom a new permission for patron clubs. So let's expand this. Here you'll see we have the option to edit clubs, edit the templates, and then finally enroll patrons in a club. So make sure you have those set first. Once you have those set the next step is going to be to come over here and we're going to go back to our tools option. So now we're going to come into tools and under our patrons and circulation, we're going to have a new option right here. It's called patron clubs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on that patron clubs. This is going to take us in to our tool for patron clubs. This is going to give me two options. The first option is going to be to create the club template. Now the club template is going to be used every time you create a new club. So these are going to be something that's generic. Here you can see we already have two created. One for your adult book club and let's say one for your kids club. Now these both allow you to create a template that would essentially every time you're creating an adult book club you would use this template. So let's click on that new club template. This is going to take me in. You'll notice that the name is required so this would be something like Crochet Club. Then down in the description we can include information such as um, you know what type of club or what type of activity it is. Then you have two options that are a checkbox. The first is to allow public enrollment. If that box is checked, that will allow you to have your patrons register from the OPAC. Um, if you'd like to have them um, register from the OPAC, then you'll want to make sure that this is selected. The next thing we have is require valid email address. Now I will tell you this is very important. If you have this checked, that means your patrons will have to have a valid email address in their patron account. If they do not have a valid email address, they will not be able to register for the club. That means the staff won't be able to register them or the patron won't be able to register from the OPAC. So if this is selected, it is a definite requirement um, that they have a valid email address. The next thing we see here is a drop down for our library. So if you're a multi-branch system, you'll be able to see those branches listed. Now if I leave it set to null, that will mean all branches can register. Now if I come up and I select a, set, a particular branch, then that means only staff members from the East Branch or patrons from the East Branch can register for a club. Now, we have two more fields down below. The first is club fields. This is any type of information that you'd like to use when you're setting up the club. So perhaps this could be their favorite yarn. Um, I can connect these to an authorized value. So if I've created an authorized value, I can add that in. I can also add um, an additional description. Now, my next one is going to be enrollment fields. Enrollment fields would be what the patron um, will be filling out when they use the template. So if I wanted to come in here and select something particular, for example, let's say um, neighborhood, 
I can select that. And if I created a neighborhood from my authorized values, I could add that in. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to come down to the bottom and save. Now that I have the template created, my next step is going to be to come in and actually create a knitting club. Now, remember, again, the templates are just allowing you to set up um, a, a form so every time you create your clubs you can use that template. Now when I hit that drop down menu for new club I can scroll right down to knitting club. This will bring up a template where you'll see I can have that option for my favorite yarn that we've added in. I can come in here and add in my knitting club um, and maybe this is Monday nights. I can add that in and then I could say Monday nights at 6. PM. Um, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to give it a start date, and then I can also give it an end date. Now, one thing I will tell you, if you set an end date, that will automatically expire from both the OPAC, if you've selected to have it uh, visible on the OPAC for your patrons to register, and on the staff side. So think of this as your end date, automatically expire. Now again, I do have the option to set this to a particular branch. And then my last option down here is favorite yarn. So I'm going to come over here and click save. Now, once I'm done, I've have these, um, I have these set up. So let's take a look now what it's going to look like on the staff side. So I'm going to come up top and we're going to pull up a patron. So I'm going to pull up um, Kelly here, and this will take us into Kelly's account. Now you'll notice here. We have our checkouts tab, our holds tab, article requests if you're using it, restrictions, and now we have a new tab here called clubs. So now I can see clubs on the back side. So here, if your staff, again, has that permission to um, enroll patrons, I can come over here and select that enroll button. Um, this gives me my option here. Now I can select the neighborhood um, that uh, Kelly is from hit finish enrollment, and now that has it set up for us. Now, let's take a look at the OPAC. Now that we've come over to the OPAC, let's again log in as a patron. I'm going to log in as Phil now. Now, here we have Phil's account. It takes us right to the summary, and I can see for Philip Airtime, he has a new tab here called Clubs. So now I can see any type of club that Phil can enroll in. So there we can see our summer adult reading, and then we can see our knitting club for Monday nights. All Phil has to do is select that enroll button, and that will enroll Phil into, um, into the club. I'm going to come over here, select finish enrollment, and now Phil's enrolled. Now you'll notice he can cancel his enrollment at any time. All right, so now we've taken a look at setting up our patron clubs. We've taken a look at enrolling our patrons on both the staff and OPAC side. Now let's go back to our tools module and let's go back into our patron clubs and take a look at the last option that we have here. And I just want to show you what it's going to look like for your users. Um, so now when your staff members log in and they want to see how many individuals have enrolled for their clubs, um, they can come over here. If I click on enrollments, this will show me each individual that is enrolled. You'll notice that it shows the name and the card number. Um, if I click on Philip Airtime, um, it will take me right into Philip's account where I can see his information. If I select clubs over here on the right hand side, I can actually see that um, information um, right in there for Philip's um, enrollment. And I can keep track of all of the individuals that are enrolled in each one of my clubs. Here you can see we have two enrolled for the music club. And then again, if I come over and I take a look at my summer adult reading and select enrollment, that will show me the number of individuals, again, enrolled in that club. My name is Jessica, and this tutorial showed us how to set up patron clubs in Koha. This tutorial is a production of Bywater Solutions. To visit more blogs, videos, and information about setting up 
system preferences in your Koha account, please visit bywatersolutions.com.